All right, joining me via Zoom, national championship winning coach, uh, new analyst on Fox College football kickoff, and of course, a 2021 college football Hall of Fame inductee, Coach Bob Stoops. Uh, coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Aaron. Good to be on with you. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I should mention, as I said, Coach is a 2021 inductee. This interview is brought to you on behalf of the Chick-fil-A College Football Hall of Fame, a 94,000-foot shrine to college football in downtown Atlanta, one of the nation's best sports facilities anywhere, including, by the way, a new locker room exhibit that includes all sorts of cool memorabilia from this year's inductees, including Coach Stoops' Rose Bowl trophy, David Pollock's Lombardi Award trophy, Tony Romo's game-worn jersey, and Walter Payton FCS Player of the Year Award, Carson Palmer's helmet, Glenn, Glenn Dorsey's game-worn jersey, on and on. Also worth mentioning, every Saturday during the season, tailgate Saturdays live at the hall, live games, events, giveaways. It all starts with Miami and Alabama a couple weeks from now. Make sure to visit when you're in Atlanta, and for more information, visit CFB Hall. Dot com. So, Coach, when you hear that, when you hear Hall of Fame inductee, you know, you're going in alongside Carson Palmer, Glenn Dorsey, C.J. Spiller, Tony Romo, who you now join in the media space. Uh, you know, I, I know you got to you get you know, there's a lot of football left to be called and broadcast. But what is it, what does it mean to you when you hear college football Hall of Fame inductee? Well, I, I you know, I enter it with, again, great humility. Uh, you know, no one does this alone. Football is the ultimate team sport. Your assistant coaches, the support of your administration, you know, the hard work of the players. And I, I've just been surrounded by great people, uh, a great family that, that loved the game as well and allowed me to do it. Uh, great assistant coaches, a, a great, I had the same president, David Boren and athletic director Joe Castiglione my entire 18 years as a head coach. And they were incredibly supportive, a great fan base. And then, you know, I, I, I go through the list of players. I'm often asked, who are some of my favorite players? Are you kidding me? I've got, I've got, I've got hundreds of them, you know, and fortunately, you know, just great, great national award winning players. But, you know, and, and, and then guys that were just walk-ons that, that are, I'm still very close with. So in the end, I, I, I did this with the help of a whole bunch of people. How cool is it for you? You know, sometimes, obviously, listen, coaching is a transient, you know, profession, but you did get to stay at Oklahoma for, you know, 20-ish years, give or take a year or so. Uh, as the head coach, you know, you're obviously still involved in the community. You obviously had a say in who replaced you. I know you have sons that play for the team. How cool is it to not just have your own legacy at Oklahoma, but still be able to be part of, of the program now and, and see its continued evolution and growth? Yeah, that's important to me. It means so much to me when you've invested so much for so many years. You want to you want to you want to see it to continue to thrive, and it really is under again new leadership with our a new president Joe Harris, same athletic director Joe Castiglione, and a great head coach Lincoln Riley's doing an incredible job, and he's got so many great years in front of him. So I'm excited about that. It it was I had my opportunities to leave over those 18 years, and I just felt a, a loyalty and a commitment to the university having them having invested so much in me that I just felt this and and we have a great place let's face it we have a great product at OU and a great fan base great support so all of it it just never made sense for me to 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 leave and go somewhere else and and uh so I was lucky it, it just worked for as long as it did and, and you look at the consistent success through these last 20 21 years it's pretty incredible I don't think anyone else can say that they've had that consistent of success through the last 21 years. Yeah, you know, dumb question, but, you know, I've been around college sports, you know, pretty long at this point. And what you said, the, the leadership and the structure, the ability to, to work for one AD, one school president for, for basically your entire tenure, I don't want to undersell what you and your guys did on the field, but that's one thing that always stands out to me. You know, people say all the time, you know, we want to be, 
the next Oklahoma, the next Alabama, the next Gonzaga in basketball, the next Villanova in basketball. But, you know, I know the folks up at Gonzaga, and it's the same deal, one AD, one school president during this entire run. How important do you feel like it was to your success, not only the, the coaching, recruiting that you guys did on the field, but the structure that Oklahoma gave you off the field? Well, I, I think uh, it definitely the leadership it starts there, um, and and we had great leadership. But you're not getting it done just with that. Uh, the bottom line, the work of the players, the right direction from the head coach and and assistant coaches, the development through the year, all of that it all has to go together. And and fortunately for us, it did. You know, we we had like I said, I've had incredible assistant coaches and great strength coach and Jerry Schmidt that had him my entire career, a um, guy that's been a part of three or four different national championship teams. So all of it together just blended really well for us at OU. And uh, we, we're still riding that, that positive uh, energy. And when you look at the, again, the consistency in the program through these 21 years is, is pretty remarkable. I want to get back to the program, to some of your teams, but, you know, you're going to be part of a new team this fall. Uh, you know, people, a lot of people probably who know me know I host Fox Sports Radio, but on the TV side, um, you're joining Rob Stone, Reggie Bush, Matt Liner, Brady Quinn on Big Noon Kickoff. Uh, one, how much have you had a chance to get to know those guys? And then two, just how fired up are you to, to get out to L.A. to work with those guys? I know you guys will be on site at all sorts of games. How fun and how excited are you for that chapter of your career? Very excited. It, it is, just as you said, a great team of guys to work with, all of those guys. And I have had a chance to get to know them and be around them and, and just super people, fun to be around and very in, you know intelligent in their conversations in regard to our game and uh, in a great organization there at Fox Sports. Uh, you know, just great leadership, a uh, great team of people. I just recently was at a seminar with all of them for a couple of days and uh, just a family type atmosphere that's been incredibly successful. And, and I think it's just going to continue to be more and more successful as we go. So I'm really looking forward to it. we got a bunch of fun games to go to. We start off with Ohio State at Minnesota okay. on, thurs on Thursday before the first Saturday. And then, and then we travel right over, uh, right down the street to Madison, Wisconsin. You got Wisconsin, Penn State. And then, then to Ohio State for Oregon at Ohio State. And then we go to OU for OU Ooh. Nebraska. And then, then we're on to, here's a great one, Chicago Soldier Field, Wisconsin and Notre Dame. So uh, there's some great venues there to go to. I'm a kind of a stadium junkie. I love big games. I love being in stadiums, having, you know, just competed in so many of them. I, I really look forward to being at those great venues. And that's where, you know, the first five weeks we plan on being out on the road, you know, enjoying the, the stadium atmospheres. Well, I was going to say, first of all, if you need a personal assistant, uh, you know, feel free to uh, hit me up. You got all my information now. Uh, I was going to say, how exciting is it for you? I mean, obviously you've probably coached in some of these venues, um, but you're focused on your game plan prep. Uh, you're probably going straight from the hotel to the to the locker room back and forth. How, I don't know how many of you, and, and you obviously played in the Big Ten as well, but how excited are you to, to, to walk the sidelines, to walk the stands, to be out in the tailgate scene at, uh, at the shoe, at, uh, you know, uh, uh, Camp Randall, all these really, really, really cool venues? Yeah, I, I have, uh, having played at Iowa, I've, I've played in, an, in most all these venues. I've coached in a lot of others. So, but still, as you said, you, you're in a different mode when you're going in to play a game. You're kind of just looking at that, that 120 yards, you know, and, and that's all you're concerned with. So, um, you know, so it'll be different to, to be able to experience the, the, the fan, uh, the fandom and all the, the energy that's out there for these games. So that'll be different for me. But um, I am, again, just really looking forward to it. Uh, so I know you're now uh, an unbiased member of the media, but, uh, you know, the Sooners down in Norman, uh, AP poll comes out, they're ranked number two. Um, again, I, I know we talked about, you know, your successor, Lincoln Riley, the success that he has had. What can you tell us about these 2021 Sooners? Because obviously they win the Cotton Bowl, bring back a ton of guys. Coach Grinch on defense is there for a third year. The defense seems to be evolving 
Um, how excited are you to, to, to see these guys, you know, in person, you'll have a chance to see them obviously against Nebraska, but you know, it's, it's a program that you'll be forever tied to. And, and, you know, they, they look really strong coming into this year. I think it is going to be, we're always strong. I think we're going to be even better. We're going to be, we're going to be stronger this year overall. I think the emergence and the, now the more experience that Spencer Rattler has, has been able to achieve here in the last year, having spring ball, having, you know, a regular summer camp, just another year under his belt. I believe he's just scratching the surface. It's going to have a huge year. When you look at the success Lincoln has had with all his quarterbacks and Spencer has the same kind of talent. So I, I see that it being really, and then to go with it, we've got a lot of our line back or we got probably the best old line coach in America, Bill Biedenboe. And then, you know, for, for the run game, you've got Kennedy Brooks back, a thousand yard rusher uh, that sat out a year ago to go with Eric Gray, another a transfer from Tennessee that's really strong. So I, I think offensively, we won't miss a beat. If anything, we'll be stronger. And defensively, I don't think there's any question with eight or nine starters back and the consistency in the coaching staff there with Coach Grinch. I, I don't think there's any question. And it used to be you questioned our D line. Now it's like a strength uh, throughout throughout the country, and and to go with you know just a, a bunch of other really solid good players, and Coach Grinch does a great job moving those guys around, causing you know causing problems for the offense. So I, I think that's going to lead to us you know uh, having a big year. It kind of plays back to the the last question I asked you about traveling, but. I know, you know, the first year or so you were out of football, you, you were very vocal about, um, you know, it was a little bit of an adjustment for you, you know, driving to the stadium, traffic, all that stuff. But how, how do, do you enjoy as a fan, you know, sitting back on Saturdays? Obviously, you're going to be in many of these venues this year, but do you enjoy sitting back watching how offenses evolve, how defenses change, um, just the growth of the game? I'm, I'm just curious because I know, like I said, when you first retired, you were vocal about it was a little difficult for you, but I'm curious now, three, four years removed, if you enjoy just seeing the different styles, different matchups, different regions of the country, things like that. Well, it's still difficult. You know, nothing, nothing fills that void of having to go out and perform or be in that intense competition for three and a half, four hours. You just can't, you just can't replicate that. Uh, but, but I, I've always been a, uh, a football junkie. I, I'm constantly watching college, the college game, the, the NFL game, what, what's new, who's, you know, I, I'm always, you know, watching everything I can. And fortunately I get everything, all the, you know, I get all the packages you're allowed to get. And if I know I got two at the same time, I'm going to record one so I could watch one, you know, one at one at a time. So I'm, my, my recorder is full, believe me. So I, I love watching all the games. Is there a non OU player coach program? It could be the NFL that is like must watch for Bob Stoops that you love watching. That's non OU related. <laughs> Ah, oh, geez, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I'd say you have to go with Patrick Mahomes. I mean, sure. gosh, is he fun to watch? Just I saw him firsthand how talented. <laughs> so uh, when <laughs> so uh, I was always a believer that guy's special. And um, but anyway, I guess that's a, that's a quick one. That's not on you, but I got to admit, on those Sundays, I'm I'm watching all my guys. I, I'm trying to pull up everyone I can. And the other would be. He didn't go to OU, but he has OU roots. He grew up in Norman. His father coached with me. It's George Kittle. Sure. He's uh, is a family friend, very close, and a, and a special, special player. Gosh, he's – so I, we're always – my family, we're always following George, and he's fun to watch, as you know, on, on social media as well. Sure. I'm guessing it's nicer to uh, watch others' game plan against Patrick Mahomes as opposed to game planning yourself. Oh, geez, yeah. He's <laughs> – you know, the, the hard part is when it breaks down, he's so dangerous. Well, when it, not only when it breaks down, but on the run, he's doing the sidearm, the, the back flip. I mean, you know, he he's doing throw it any which way. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Anyone else in your prep for the season, just teams that you're intrigued to watch? I mean, obviously, Oklahoma's in that national championship conversation. The, the usual suspects are there at the top, Ohio State, Alabama. 
Um, anybody else that you're just intrigued by coming into the season now that you're going to be, you know, on TV with the Fox crew kind of talking about all these games? A few of them for sure stand out to me. Georgia with the number of starters returning. Uh, they found the quarterback last year. He was 4-0 and in their last four games with him, C.J. Stroud. I think that's going to be big. They're going to be tough. Maybe, you know, and then uh, to go with them, I think the other two, A&M has a lot of people back, a great run game and a great line. They got to replace their quarterback, so that's a question. And the other one majorly is in our league here in the Big 12, Iowa State. They've got a ton of guys back. The offensive player of the year in Brees Hall uh, for in, uh, you know, in the Big 12 back. Brock Purdy, quarterback, back. Great tight end, Charlie Kolar. Uh, back all conference guy and defense Mike Rose they got the big 12 defensive player of the year back so they, they've got a lot of people back on an already really good team and and you know uh, coach Campbell's had the, the consistency in his staff I think also is is uh, you know is, is really strong and makes a difference in why they'll be so good again well, I was going to say, too, and this is no disrespect to anyone who came before him, but how much do you enjoy watching the growth and evolution of that program at Iowa State? Because, again, it's no disrespect to a previous coach, a staff, or this or that. But it's obviously, you know, it, it has challenges that are unique in the Big 12, doesn't have that natural recruiting base of an Oklahoma, Texas, uh, you know, TCU, whatever. Um, and I think it's one of the cooler stories in college football that, as you said, I think people got to see it up close last year and they're going to get to continue to see it this year. Yeah, I follow it closer than probably most people because I played at Iowa. Right. And, uh, and then was a young coach for Hayden Fry for another five years. So I, I was playing on the team or assistant coach there at Iowa for 10 years. So that's a natural rivalry, you know, with Iowa State right down the road. So I've always paid attention to them, and uh, but they're doing a great job, as is Iowa. Let's bet Kirk yeah. Ferentz and his staff have done a great job also and really finished strong last year. So, uh, and I believe beat Iowa State last year. So, uh, so anyway, it's, um, you know, they're, they're, they're both great programs that are really doing well and fun to watch for me being, you know, spend, spending 10 years there in Iowa. Had to get that jab in on the Cyhawk Trophy in 2019, didn't you, Coach? It's okay. I, I get it. I know how rivalries work. Well, I wasn't so. sure, but I, I think they did. I, 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 I don't know if they played last year just because of COVID, but I oh, believe you know in, what? That's probably right. Yeah. In 19, yeah. No, it's yeah. uh no, and and you know, Coach Ferenc, you know, you said you being an Iowa guy, you follow both. You know, I went to UConn. Coach Ferenc is a prominent former uh, UConn Husky, so. Uh, so I've always followed his career closely dating back to when I went to school there. So, uh, so I'm very familiar with his program and they, they actually might've been maybe the second best team in the big 10 by the end of last year with the way they were playing uh, a couple quick questions. We'll get you out of here. Uh, first one, you know, what, what's your take on just the evolution of college football off the field is, it's just, it's been a, an off season of, of absurd, not absurdity in a bad way, but the name image likeness stuff comes uh, the, the transfer stuff comes and I think we all understand how name image likeness works. You know, I, I don't want to speak for anybody, but, you know, I think we understand, you know, players re generate a lot of revenue for schools, social media has changed kind of the dynamics, but as a coach, are you kind of excited that you're not in it? Uh, or, or, you know, uh, what, what are your, your, your former colleagues saying? It's just a whole new world. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just certainly different and just curious uh, as somebody that's now outside of it, how you get to look in and kind of see the name image likeness and the transfer stuff. Well, it's just like a lot of things uh, in life. Very, very little stays the same forever. Everything's always evolving. You could throw conference realignment in there as well. Very little stays the same forever. So what we're doing is evolving, morphing, and we're, we're going to figure it out on the run. We'll see. You know, there's been some parts of the transfer portal that have been really positive. OU's been a great beneficiary of that. But some of it's been really sad. There's a lot of guys that enter the transfer portal, give up their scholarship, and don't get another one. But no one talks about that. Sure. There's, and that it's, it's, sadly, it's a pretty fair percentage. So anyway, um, you know, we're going to be evolving here in these next few years uh, in, in all these ways. And listen, there's no stopping it. Everyone acts all oh, is this good. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad for it. We're going to evolve with it. 
And it, I believe college football will always be great. It's a great product. People love watching it and covering it. And uh, we'll see how this all changes. But but you can't put the ketchup back in the bottle. Right. So it's here it goes. So let's hold on and see. Let's hope hope hopefully we could keep it to a point where it's as entertaining as it always has been. Well, it'll always be it'll always be entertaining. Um, yeah, I was going to actually ask you a little bit quickly about the Texas Oklahoma stuff. I mean, I saw you released a statement. And I think, you know, it was in line with exactly what you just said. The sport evolves, life evolves, the world evolves. Um, you got to you know. keep moving and you got to look out for what's best for your constituents. And, and that's what everyone does. And, uh, and in the end, when you're doing these type of things and in and, and realignments and whatnot, you don't always get to have all the say-so. And uh, maybe 10 years ago, we might have had more say-so. But now with the number of teams in, in the SEC now, we're, we're not, you know, Oklahoma State, where that wasn't part of the deal with us. And uh, though we wished it would have been, uh, that wasn't an option. So what are we to then to, to not do what we feel is best for us? It just doesn't work that way. And uh, so anyway, uh, we'll see how it goes and uh, we'll see what the future brings for everybody. Very good. The future is bright for, for you, for the Sooners, for college football going into the season. We covered a lot of ground. I mean, is there anything that we missed, anything that you're fired up about? I mean, we talked about the venues. We talked about some individual teams. But uh, anything else that we haven't hit on? Because it's coming soon. We got week zero here in a few weeks with Nebraska, Illinois. And then from there, like like I said, you you well, like you said, schedule gets a lot busy starting with uh, Ohio State at Minnesota there on that Thursday. What else did we miss that you're fired up for? I don't, I think you covered it all. And, uh, and anyway, so I, no, I'm just fired up to be part of the Fox team and to be covering college football, like we're going to be. And, uh, and hopefully look forward to watching the Sooners have a big year. He is. I, I still make that mistake. I'm supposed to be a Fox broadcaster and I'm still saying we and us about well, OU. <laughs> so that's I'm why I said, Listen, you're, you're like I said, you're supposed to be unbiased, but I think we all understand when you spend 25 years in a place, uh, it's hard to get it out of your blood. And oh, by the way, uh, you're going to be on the sideline for a lot of those big games this year. So uh, former Oklahoma coach, college football Hall of Famer, uh, the, the ceremony is later this year. But as I said, uh, if you're in Atlanta for Miami, Alabama or anything else, stop by the College Football Hall of Fame, tailgate Saturdays. New exhibit with the 2021 inductees, Coach Bob Stoops. And, and, I, and I would say the Hall of Fame people are incredible. Yes. First class organization in absolutely every way. And when you travel through the Hall of Fame, it's really special. It's it is fun to see. Ninety four thousand feet is no joke. Ninety four thousand square feet, I should say, is no joke. So uh, if you're in Atlanta and if you're not, CFBHall.com. Coach Stoops, genuinely appreciate the time. Thank you. All right, Aaron, good to be with you.